It's Christmas time. It's Christmas. Hey guys, and welcome back. Um, so this is gonna be episode 19 of my read mass. If you just checked out episode 18, you guys know I'm filming everything on the same day because I was a bit sick yesterday, but I'm feeling better today. Um, for this one, I'm gonna be looking down on my phone because I'm discussing seven couples so bear with me it's a book that explored a lot of relationships so i needed to have my notes down so that i don't make any mistakes it's gonna be a short and sweet video because the book was like 170 pages it's basically a christmas novella that was done during a hokey romance series so i don't want to get too too deep into it especially for the you know the ending of the book because i feel like if you didn't discover their series yes you might be spoiled a lot so i don't want to give it given too much information i want you guys to be able to just be teased a little bit so that it gives you incentive to check the series and you can see for yourself if you like it or not so the title of this book is Puck the Holes and it's by G.K. Brady. Um, I've never heard of this author before. I've never read any books or even series of the hokey romance, even though I love hokey romance. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to jump into the series right after I finish with the whole read mass because it was really interesting. I love the dynamic of the couple and I feel like I'm going to enjoy it. So it's definitely going on my TBR. So let me start with the first couple. So we're first introduced to Paige and Beck. Uh, so we learned that they have four daughters and uh, the last two ones are twins and they're like under nine months old. So they're really young. Um, we learned that Paige is into real estate. I think she has a real estate company and Beck is a hockey coach. Um, and so... Basically, the premise of the story for all of the couples that you guys know, they're going on this, um, not cabin, because it's more like a mansion in the snow, vacation for uh, one of the couple's wedding. So they're doing a wedding in two days and they want to spend time uh, between couples because most of them have kids or have been married or are dating, you know, hockey players who are really busy during the years. So it's a good opportunity for each couple to reconnect and to meet back with each other. And also um, they're thinking that it's going to be a nice way to be there for their friend's wedding. Um, so Paige and Beck, to go back to them. Um, so they have the thing also. All of the couples are going to have a fight and you're going to see each of the reasons all the time. Uh, so Paige and Beck, um, their fight begins because Beck feels like Paige is more of a worker and a mom than a wife. So wife is the least of her priority and he feels like she's been neglecting him. She's super busy and when she's not busy at work, she's busy with their children, which is nice. But basically, we see them in the car on the way to the, the location and she's crying because she didn't want to leave her kids. But the thing is, it's a kids free wedding, so it's not like she could bring them. And on top of that, he wouldn't want to because they want to spend time with his wife, you know, just uh, on one on one time. So they have a fight about that and she feels like he's not being understanding and he's being a jerk. And he's feeling like they didn't have any intimacy in the last few months. They used to have sex a lot and to be really close to each other. And she feels like she's uncomfortable having sex because, like I said, their twins are like nine, nine months old. So she feels like she's not on the top of her game uh, with her body and she doesn't feel comfortable. So it's a bit of a misunderstanding between them. Then we have, uh, for the rest, I'm not sure if it's the, in the order of the book, but I'm just, it's the order of my memory. We have Lily and Gage. So uh, Lily, she had a previous child from another marriage, from what I understand. And they have also a kid together. And Gage um, asked, and Lily asked her parents to take care of the kids while they go on that vacation. And his mom is angry because she feels like, why didn't they ask her to babysit the kids? And also Gage should be present for his mom. So she's a bit, you know, negative. And you can feel that she doesn't get along well with either Lily or even her son. Um, because even before he picks up the phone, he's already aggravated by her. And she has nice, um, she has... Um, 
really, really harsh words for Lily, but she's on speakerphone, so Lily hears, and she feels like Gage should be taking her side and defend her to his mom, which he didn't do because he feels like he's stuck in the middle between his mom and his wife, and he doesn't want to have to pick and choose. So yeah, it's a complicated situation, and having living it, like, I had a boyfriend that was really close to his mom. I know it can be difficult sometimes to find your way as a daughter-in-law, in a sense, and to be in between a son and a mother relationship. You never want to go in between them, but at some point the guy has to make you a priority. So I can relate to that couple so much. Then we have Sarah and Quinn, and Sarah is actually Gage, um, she's actually Gage's sisters. So she also has issue with her mom. I don't know, really know why. And she doesn't want to pick up the phone. And Quinn is saying, look, I hope your mom is not uh, coming to spend holidays with us because I want to be just the two of us and have time together. And the problem is um, that Sarah let it be known that her mom might swing, might swing by. So Quinn is aggravated by that. So you can see that in both those couples, it's that mom that is the problem. Then you have Mia and Mac. Mac has two children and Mia is engaged to Mac, but she doesn't want to set a date for the wedding. So he's pushing for her to finally really, you know, set a date and so that they can celebrate the wedding and she can adopt his two sons, but she doesn't want to rush into that. The thing is, he sees that at her as her having cold feet and like she doesn't want to, you know, commit to him and his son. So they have a fight about that. So like I said, every couple is having a fight on the way to the location. Then you have Dave and Ellie. Ellie doesn't want a second baby. And Dave is the captain of the team. So he's often away, really busy, not really there, even for their first baby, Kingsley. And she feels like, why would you you want to have a second child when you're not even present for the first one even when i get to see you i have to do everything by myself in the house you know take care of everything so she's super tired and she really doesn't want to even think about having a second kid so they have a fight about that and then you have natalie and tj there it's the opposite it's natalie that wants a kid and tj doesn't want to they got married on the promises from tj that they will get children eventually but it feels like it's not the right timing. But for Natalie, she's like, when is going to be the right timing? Because I have a biological clock. You are a man. You can get children whenever you want. But you know, for women to have pregnancies in their late like, 30s or 40s is dangerous and it's difficult. So for her, it's the perfect timing to have a kid. But it doesn't even want to think about it. So they have a fight about that. And now I feel think I'm left with one last couple and it's um, Michaela and Blake. They're the couple that are going to get married and actually they have no problem. <laughs> They're the only one that are not fighting when they get to the location. They're happy to get married with their family, close friend, and they're excited, you know, to get to the next step. But Michaela says to Blake that she wants to hold off on sex until the wedding. Um, so Blake is a bit, you know, confused because he was thinking to have sexy time with his wife is soon to be wife at the mountain, but it's not gonna happen like that. So this is the seven couples like I presented to you guys. They get to the location and the men goes their way, the women goes their way because everybody is in a sour mood after the multiple fights. So the women end up drunk and going to sleep early. The men also get drunk and have nice games in the game room. It's a really big house with plenty of, you know, hot tubs and activities like uh, you can play pool, you can play so much games. Uh, so they manage to stay away from each other. On the next day, the men are supposed to go uh, on snowmobile and just have like a nice day um, for the bachelor party of Blake and the women are supposed to have a spy day. When they go uh, to do the snowmobile, uh, you have Dave that proposed to go on a beaten path that is not supposed to be the trail that you're supposed to follow as tourists, but he's like, okay, it's going to be exciting and we're going to be seeing nice, nice settings. It's going to be more fun if we go that way. So this is what they do and an avalanche uh, happens. They're stuck in the snow and Blake, the groom, is hit by one of the snowball bites, so he's injured so they cannot really move him or whatever. So they decided to wait out the night and wait for search and rescue. In the meantime, the lady finished their spy day and it's supposed to be the rehearsal dinner and they didn't see the men pulling up, so they're really worried about them. And they contact search and rescue, but the guy is like, we can't go looking for them without us knowing where they are. Because the thing is, the trail that the guy indicated is not the one that they followed. So it's all a big mess, and I'm going to leave it at that so that you guys can discover the story. But this 
event and the fact that they are going to be in a near-death experience is going to bring all the couple back together. So it's going to be a happy ending. So I can say that much. It was a solid five star for me. There was no spice. It was there was hint of spice, but no sexy scene. And I'm curious to see if it's the series in the series. It's the same because normally Oki romance are really, really, you know, down and dirty. Like I like to say, like. It's the kind of story that you can either read before or after getting into a series because obviously it's going to spoil you. Um, but in the sense, you can get a glimpse of each couple and see which one you prefer before you jump into the series. So I really liked it. It's a five star for me and I recommend it. So I will see you guys in episode 20 of my Readmas tomorrow. And I hope you guys have a best day, night, evening or whenever you guys are watching. Bye. Season of peace is finally here.